Welcome back to the up and down matches. We have a few games left that are going to determine everything. And Keldor has the stats. Yeah, exactly. So right now, if DRG is going to, if DRG wins this game, he is in uh, code S. Uh, because then he uh, won against everyone that he could tie with in a potential scenario. And then uh, the only game that we would need is Bomber against Yoda, because that is the game uh, that would determine the next opponent. If Bomber wins the next match, then a lot of things could happen, depending on uh, Mini, for example. If Mini takes down Genius and DRG, we could have a tie situation between um, DRG, Mini and Yoda, given that Yoda also prevails over Bomber later on. So that's a lot of eventuality but that's only the case if Bomber takes the win right now. Yeah. If DRG wins, it's pretty simple. Now, if DRG wins, it's only between Bomber and Yoda for the last spot. So if you're a fan of any of the other players, you better hope Bomber takes this one, especially if you're a Bomber fan. <laughs> yep. There could also be another scenario where if Bomber wins, then loses the next match against Yoda. Yoda and Bomber are tied, but okay, then would advance. And yeah, it's a little bit complicated. There, are, we might need all of the matches depending on how the next match goes. But Bomber is already in the lobby. DRG is currently just waiting to join, and Daybreak is going to be the map, which is of course a cool map for Terran versus Zerkia. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a pretty awesome map. There's no imperfections or balances really on this map. This map's been around a long time now in GSL pool, so I feel like it's it's a map that everybody recognizes. It may even be time for a new map to replace it, but I mean, it's so good it's hard to replace it, you know what I mean? Yep. It's like the best map in the pool, so... DRG just joined, so we are nearly ready to go. Both of these players are currently 2-0 in the group. We have uh, DRG with wins against Genius and against Yoda. On the other hand, Bomber was able to win against Genius and against Mini, so against the two Protoss players that he faced today. Now he's up against the first Zerg, and whoever wins here is definitely in Kodas. Yeah, it's going to be undoubted. So, let's find out who it's going to be. Both players are actually in the lobby this time. There's no UFO, there's no aliens. Oh, I love this music, man. It's time to find out. Here they are, Bomber versus Stongray Goo, the match you've been waiting for. Both the favorites of this group. Actually, I'm just looking at it, and if I'm, I mean, I have to uh, confirm this, but I think if Bomber now wins, we might actually have a tie between Bomber, DRG, and Yoda later. That is, is possible. That is, is actually an outcome. So only if DRG wins, he will, uh, will he uh, be in Code S for sure. If Bomber wins, he's still not necessarily through this. Yeah. Okay. So I see. Yeah. What you're that, that Bomber has one more match left. Yeah. That just hit me. It's okay. not as simple as we originally thought. It's actually true. Well, if what I originally said is still true, if DRG t uh, takes this, then he's in Code S. Yeah. But if Bomber takes it, even though he's on a 3-0 score. It is not necessarily, um, he will not necessarily advance. Yeah, because Yoda can also be tied with him at 3-1. And it, and that's only possible if Yoda beats him. So, then Yoda could potentially be tied with Dong Rigu as well if Dong Rigu loses the Yeah, that's the, the three-way tie that I talked yeah. about because he yeah, won against uh, Yoda. Alright, so, so we are jumping into the game. Daybreak is the map. Terran versus Zerg here at the GSL up and downs. It is DRG against Bomb. And the starting on Terran starts to the bottom left of the map. This guy is dangerous. He proved it against the two Protoss players in the group against Genius and Mini. Now he's up against the lonely Zerg. He is... Stati Bummel. And he's facing an 8 pool. Yes. Really There's cool strat here by DRG. Maybe expecting Bomber to go for the answer first. Let's intro the MVP player, the Zerg here, going for the 8 pool. The multiple time champion he is. MVP Dongnegu. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit sneaky. So DRG wants to end this fast, and Bomber, I could see him go for the 14 CC here. And if he does. It's gonna mean trouble. Well, he definitely is. Yeah. He's got no wall either, man. There's nothing. He builds the supply depot already at the mineral line. There's no wall. And he is going uh, for this 14 command center. The question now also, how exactly is DRG gonna play this? How many drones will he pull? Will he pull drones at all? Or will he just rely on the Zerglings? He does not even have a scouting drone right now. And he doesn't need one because it's a two-player map. And another question is, where does Bomber build his command center? Sometimes Terran players will build it at the choke point. But, but no, no, he's building it on the low ground. 
And this is going to be a, a very, very fast game, guys. Yeah, this may... Oh, he's pulling all the drones. Well, all of them except, you know, yeah, he needs a two, two back at he home. He needs but two in the main base in case that Bomber uh, lifts his command center and flies away. We've seen this defense uh, executed Marine by Marine King. King. Yeah. But right now, this is looking like a build all a loss. Suoshin played strategies like that against Marine King. That's T as well against Supernova. Yeah, but DRG currently does everything right. He leaves a few drones behind. He still has mining. He gets a lot of Zerglings. And he, if he kills the barracks, if he actually prevents the barracks from happening, then it's over. And, and I think he will. There's no way to get that barracks up. This should be it. He's just going to stop SCBs from getting over there. His Lings will attack the SCB, then the barracks. Yep. And the drones kill another SCV. Bomber cancels his command center, of course. Starts nothing. He's just going to have to GG, I think. Yeah, he can try to fly He's away with his command center. He's got SCV to the north of the map. He may start a barracks over there. He will try to build a barracks somewhere. He needs to lift the command center. And now, of course, DRG's job is to chase down the SCVs. He should start to drone here. He should start to drone, but he builds Zerglings. He wants to have this many, uh, this many Zerglings. He can't just head home with those drones that he has. That's what he's most likely going to do. I don't know why he's trying to chase these uh, these SCBs because he has definitely enough Zerglings to take them down. Yeah. Top uh, left is, by the way, the barracks that you mentioned. Yep. And he all he, all you need really to stop the Lings is a bunker. But to to stop everything else, you're going to need mining. Uh, and okay, now he catches the SCBs and Bomber does uh, DRG a favor because he walks back, so the drones can now get into the main base. And that's what he does. He has mining, something that his opponent just doesn't have. The yeah, that's it. It's just delaying at this point. Yeah. DRG is in code S. Congratulations. He could be tied with the Bomber and with Yoda, but he won against both of them. Therefore, we have a code S player, and it is DRG. Tomariku is doing some swimming motions there in his booth afterwards. He looked a little bit funny while he's trying to plug his equipment, but the fog says it all. DRG. Is in code S, yep. where uh, many people would argue he belongs. And this also means that we only have one game left for the day. It's going to be Yoda versus Bomber. They both are two wins and one loss. And the game between the two of them will determine who will be the second player in code S. And this is going to be sick, man. It's going to be on Antigua Shipyard. A great map for Terran versus Terran. And Genius is joining, and I don't know why. Okay, usually the games that are not necessary are not being played and uh, Genius against Mini is definitely a game that we do not need. This does not make any sense. The game is obsolete. There is no reason to play this game. Yeah, I'm asking in lobby about that. Frankly. Unless I made a, a major mistake in uh, um, how many wins Yoda and Bomber have, and that's no, they're, definitely not. They're uh, saying in chat that we have to play all the games. Okay. So. Play. That's new. Oh, All right, it has so happened once before. Yeah, uh, okay, someone types wait. So I think uh, they just realized now that they, the that yeah. game is needed. I because it, the last few seasons, if a game was needed, we didn't, we didn't play them. So I think that they just realized it. I mean, if you show all the games, that's fine with me. But for the players, that's of course a little bit of an ordeal. Neither Genius nor Mini can advance here. And the only game that really counts for the group itself is Bomber against Yoda. Both these players know this game doesn't matter. And right now it's even being determined whether it's going to be played at all. You can see on both players' expressions at this point that they are just... They're basically just two sandbag players in the group that are... When you put two sandbags in the room and ask them to fight each other, guess who wins? Nobody wins. You can see in their eyes that both of them are really disappointed with how this day went, especially Genius looks disappointed here. Mini also, but he... Yeah, he's a little bit more laid back. He's like, yeah, oh well. All right, we're literally just waiting for a decision on what's going to happen here, if we are playing this game or not. The games that are waiting, left yeah. is Genius Mini, Bomber Yoda, and DRG Mini. I give you a quick overview over the group. We have DRG on the 3 0. So e 0 3, that is. DRG? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I think you said no. Genius for some reason. No, I, I, DRG is on. No, DRG is on 3-0, he won against uh, Bomber and Yoda. These are the two players that he could potentially tie with. 
and therefore it doesn't matter because in the direct comparison he won, so he is in code S, that's a given, even if he loses the last remaining match that he had against Mini. Mini and Genius are both 0-2, so the best score that they could achieve is a 2-2 score, whereas Yoda and Bomber have to play each other, are on 2-1, so the winner of the game, game Bomber versus Yoda, Yoda no will be 3-1 and will advance to code S no matter what, because nobody else can tie with him. So that's the only game that we actually need. Right now we are in a lobby with Genius and Mini, this might be a mistake. I think it is, because yeah. both uh, Genius has said so, having the uh, the Korean Observer and also Lobby Hoster is also saying please wait, they're just getting a, a decision from the referee, and yeah, he's saying that it means we don't need it, Yep. and so They I should just ask me next time. Yeah, they should. So I everybody's leaving, we're gonna go and play the, the proper game. Yeah. We're going to play the Terran versus Terran between Bomber and Yoda. This is the game that we really need, and uh, at this point, putting the players uh, through uh, the... Yeah. yeah. Production just confirms it, so we are heading into Bomber versus Yoda. So Genius and Mini, they can uh, go home right now. For them, of course, this was a really disappointing day, and we are not putting them through the ordeal of playing this game. Yeah. Um, Yep, there we are. The map is in Tomb Valley. In Tomb Valley, indeed. This is going to be a completely different map for the Terran versus Terran than I predicted. Mech is used in this matchup quite often on this map. We may mm -hmm. see that. I'm really excited to see what Bomber is going to do because he is an aggressive player. We saw him last time go for an aggressive economic build against DRG. Just was completely countered. And in this map, though, the rush distance between the bases is a little bit reduced. You can easily go for Banshee play here, but you could also go for some sort of proxy play as well. Mysterious hood guys behind us. I know, man. Who is that? I don't know. He might be sent to kill. Oh, it's I am coach. Actually, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly gets a pump gun. <laughs> run, wolf, run! <laughs> yeah, detective wolf. You've been on to me. <laughs> you have to die. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very well aware of what's going on around here. Uh, Yoda is not joining. I think the he probably yet. wasn't set up. Yeah, yet he because probably DRG did. just left. Yep. And then the other two players are still in the booth occupying it, so he just probably sat in his booth right now. We have to wait. Yeah, Genius just uh, got all this stuff and is now leaving the booth. So, so I guess we have another minute, and uh, then the next game is gonna start. At least it should, and that's also be, uh, the last game. And yeah, so we have a Zerg player and a Terran player advance. Mini was the only player today in this group who has not been in Code S before. And yeah, it comes down to Bomber and Yoda. Another group where uh, Terran player will advance. We had one yesterday. Um, now we need something to discuss here while we wait for... We do? Yeah. Okay, so sure. I think we're gonna have a little bit more time as uh, he's not quite in the lobby yet, and he's probably still setting up at this point. Uh, this group is kind of ended up being uh, one that Protoss just got totally spanked in. You know, we had both Protoss players totally owned. There was not much. There was not even much room for for anything. Even in the game where Genius had a massive lead because Donor Goose completely botched attack. Well, not botched, but it just was countered. Yeah. He wasn't able to win that game. Pros players looking a little bit weak in this group uh, today. Yeah, but I feel that, I mean, Mini, he had a decent run in uh, in Code A. He won against Flash and he won against Naniwa, but still the performance that he showed today was not really great. I yeah. mean, the games, he looked a little bit off. As you mentioned also, Genius, it was like just a little bit disappointing what he played today. The game went in Tomb Valley, he should have won that game. At least, I mean, You've seen no, you you haven't seen it because you spilled your coffee. No, the, he was so far behind; it was crazy. But then he was really indecisive. If he goes for three bases, he's ahead. If he goes for a timing on two bases, he's also ahead. But if but he, he did starts something weird, if he starts to go for a timing, then in the middle of it, he is like, okay, well, maybe I should take my third base. Falls back and gives DRG all the time that he needs. Then, and, uh, uh, and uh, this is a map where you can take a lot of bases. Yeah, so. I feel like this was just today the two Protoss players not really on top of the game. Yeah, in a little looking, bit of weird shape. He got a little bit unlucky in his Ohana game as well. That was kind of yeah. a problem for him with the 11-11. You were saw. right though. We had yesterday a Zerg and a Terran advancing and this is exactly the same constellation that we're going to have today. The first place in the group uh, yesterday was Hyun. The second place was Hack, and today the first place is DRG, and the second place will be a Terran player. So uh, no Protoss advancing. On the other hand, what's the race distribution in Code S right now with the players that it's, already qualified? Do you know? It's pretty even. I think it's like nine, eight, and seven or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 
So pretty even, and in the next few days we still have a lot of really, really strong Protoss players. MC is playing, Seed is playing, uh, partying. Um, a few more. You've got so. Flash playing as well, coming yep. up soon, uh, another strong Terran. Now if Bomber advances, there'll be two Startail players already getting in, two Startail Terrans, and that'll be something that I think Startail will be very happy with. can actually just have a quick look here, to be honest. Let's see. Tomorrow, for example, we have uh, in the Protoss play, we have Party. Trap is also playing. Then uh, the next day we have, as mentioned, Seed is one of the players that we have, one of the Protoss players. And then the last day there's uh, MC, Terminator, for example. Terminator, yeah, don't forget about him. Yep, finale. Vampire was able to secure his spot already, so he will not be playing the up and down matches. So still a couple of really strong Protoss players that could definitely get out of their groups. Yeah, but it's only the second day of up and down. Yeah, yesterday it was only JYP, and JYP had actually a good chance of advancing. It was such a close group. The he had a really cool strategy as well with his DTs on uh, yeah. Antigua. That was pretty awesome. The thing is that yesterday's group was just so intense, so strong. In case that you didn't watch it, make sure that you check out the VODs. We had JYP alive, MMA, Hyun, Boom Boom, and Hack playing, and the, just the conclusion of the group was epic. It was really great to see these games and to see how close it was for all of those players. So that was pretty, pretty interesting. And today is a similar scenario. Well, we, we could have a three-way tie. It's not as close as yesterday's group in total yesterday up to the last few games. Every single player in the group still had a good chance of advancing. Today it's uh, it's just this trio shaping up with Yoda, Bomber and DRG pretty early in the group. But it's still very close. We could see a, well, we could have seen a tie situation yeah, it was, if not there was for the last game. Yeah, but now it's up to uh, it's up to Bomber and of course his opposing town player Yoda. And yeah, we're still waiting for Yoda, so today is a little bit like the waiting day. <laughs> yeah. Today is not today is not the up down group B, today is killing time with Color and Wolf. Yeah, killing time with Color and Wolf. Uh, yeah. well. And bam, out of topics right there. <laughs> yeah, we, sorry guys, we're a little bit boring. We don't have a lot to talk about. That's really the sad part. How was your Kimba? Oh, it was good. Um, I, w my favorite type of Kimba is actually Kimchi Kimba. I know you like Chamchi Kimba better, but... Kimbap, uh, there's a lot of different types. Voting Kimbap is good as well. Uh, and just your standard Kimbap is, is also fine. Um, what's your favorite Chige, actually? Do you like Chamchi Chige? You like no. Chamchi Chige? Yeah. I, I like still, it without the noodles. I still like Bude Chige better, but you know what? Sometimes Bude Chige is just a little bit too much on the carbs. Oh, look, a mouse test. It's yeah. the curse of Mini. It's Mini Mouse Curse. Yoda is testing his mouse, and as soon as he's ready with uh, the mouse settings, I guess we're going to go. Okay, so apparently he really has a problem with his mouse. That's really, it's, it's Mini's curse. Mini started it today. We had to wait for him the longest, and uh, that's what we get for it. Yeah, yeah well, he's, he, he's, got a, he's got a test he's got to do. You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to Saturday. Guys, if you have no idea what's going on on Saturday, it's actually GSTL time again, Team League. And we have LGIM versus Startail, and these are two of the best teams that we currently have in StarCraft 2 here in Korea. That's going to be an epic match. I actually predicted at the beginning of the season that we might see those teams in the final, and I think that would be a worthy final. There are so many good teams in Korea right now that it's really hard to call, but Startail, after they picked up Xanax, is of course just such an amazing team. And on the other hand, you have LGIM with their roster, which is just crazy. So this Team League is going to be epic. And don't forget that Team League on Saturday is a little bit earlier. It's, it's a, a 2 p.m. Team League. Yeah. Don't get confused with Code that's at 1 p.m. Just It's going to be four hours earlier, literally, than whatever time you have at your time zone. So don't forget about that. Because it's also probably going to be on, for some people, it's either going to be on Saturday or Friday. Either way, depending on what time zone you live in. So you don't have work the next day, probably. And you better watch it. Yeah, you definitely should check it out. That's going to be uh, one of the best matches that we had this season so far. And uh, yeah, GSTL is just shaping up to be uh, epic. I mean, it's going to be the best GSTL match so far, I think. I mean, it's uh, the timing is great. It's going to be an awesome time for everyone to watch. Yeah. The, the, the players for both teams, the rosters right now, are sick. We have more GSTL champions of these two teams than I think if you put all of the other teams together combined. Actually, I know. And we also have the one player who has 10 wins in uh, the individual ranking for the GSTL. Yeah, well, we have Yonga, I wonder if exactly. he's starting. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if he's starting, but he's definitely going to be uh, one of the players that's going to play. I think so. I mean, it was pretty crazy how he dominated the two teams that were facing. Um, Fnatic and who else did he all kill? On the top of my head, I actually can't even come up with a name. And the Slayers, um, I think it was, wasn't it? Was it Slayers? I think so. Yeah, it was Slayers. Yeah, they got called, uh, all killed by Yongwa, 
And in the final of the last season, of course, against FXO, they got all killed by Gumiho. And now they are disbanding, so we could actually call him uh, the Slayer's killer. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He was able to make their whole team disband. That's how hard yeah. he hit them. That drama is really crazy. Oops. What? No. No mosquito. Go away. <laughs> yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, mosquitoes in Korea are actually really mean. They are really, really mean. You know, in Europe, you have these bloodsuckers. They just fly to you at night, and uh, then they, uh, they just poke you once. They draw blood and then they are out of there. And uh, then they are lazy, sitting at the wall, doing nothing. Korean mosquitoes are just really mean. They poke you the entire night and they will not stop. So the next day you wake up and your whole body is itching. So you have to kill them. You have to. You have to be very careful. Korean bloodsuckers are the worst. These mosquitoes here are hardcore. You uh, you know, I, did you buy that thing I told you about? That you can uh, put in your room and plug in? No, I didn't because I have the uh, the uh, power plug right next to my bed, right next to my head, so I don't really want to have it. Ah, uh, okay. That's the only reason. That. But apparently the mouse problems are a little bit more severe than we so, uh, thought, so we are going to have a break before we head into the last game. Check your room for mosquitoes while we are at it, and we are back in five. Kill them all, and then we have Yoda up against Bomber.